Hey everyone, in today's video, I thought we'd do a little challenge at our portrait photo shoot today and take photos at every single aperture of my lens. So we're gonna start off at f1.4 and go all the way to f16. So let's begin. So let's start, yeah, just like in the sun a little bit. The first aperture we're gonna start at is f1.4. We're gonna keep it easy to begin with since I'm used to shooting wide open most of the time. From the way I shoot, between wide open and about f2.8, I would say is a very portrait and wedding photography look. I love usually shooting wide open for my work to create a dreamy look with shallow depth of field, especially with close-up portraits where the eyes are in focus and the rest of the face melts away. I love that look. I like that looking away. I get like a little bit of a lower angle there. I think I'm gonna skip f1.6 and 1.8 because it's gonna look very similar to f1.4. The next one we'll do is f2. Okay, so these are a little bit closer up. Oh, I like that over your shoulder because you can see the back, it looks really nice. And then we'll go to f2.8. And I was thinking for this one, if we start a little further back, maybe we can do a walking shot towards me. So I'm gonna bring my shutter speed down to 320 and just bump up my ISO a little bit. For this one, you can kind of like swing your arms around like a whimsical walk. <laughs> okay, when you're ready. Usually for portraits, I shoot wide open as I have more control over the situation. For wedding photography, I like shooting at f2, so I still have that dreamy look, but there's more leeway for getting sharp images when things are happening quickly throughout the day. If you stand just here on that little rock, actually. Yeah, that's so cool there. And then maybe we should do a little sitting shot on that rock too. Okay, so now I'm moving over to f3.5. And now I'm starting to see a really big difference in depth of field and bokeh. There's a couple of reasons I decided to go with a 50 millimeter lens for this experiment. First is a creative decision. I am aiming to capture at least one winner shot for every f-stop that we shoot with. And then maybe we could do one, yeah, if you bring your hand and kind of rest your head. So I knew I needed flexibility with the lens I chose to be able to capture a variety of shots from close-ups all the way to full body. I find that a 50 millimeter is really great for that. It's such a versatile lens that does everything pretty well when it comes to portraits. And then let's go a little bit more into the shade or maybe even that little patch of sunlight there. The sun is so bright right now. Okay, so next I'm moving up to F4. And I do have to start bumping up my ISO now so my shutter speed doesn't get too low. Okay, so I'll crop these here. And this one's like quite a wide frame so you can like kind of swing your arms out would be cool for this. The next is a technical reason. I love using a 35 millimeter lens. However, as it's a wide focal length, we would have gained a larger depth of field too quickly at the distance that I prefer to work with from my subject. On the other hand, if I used an 85 millimeter, we would have had too much depth of field throughout each f-stop, even at the smaller apertures. So I think the 50 is a nice in-between where we can work with all apertures to make them look quite different from each other. And I'll get just like one close up here as well because the background's really nice. So now I'm gonna move up to 5.6 and something I'm still doing to try and create depth and background to foreground separation is I have the background quite far away from Bodhi so we are still getting some bucket and some nice depth of field in our shots. That actually looks really nice with the wind. From about f3.5 to 5.6, I consider it to be more of a fashion photography, editorial, documentary, and street photography look. At these apertures, you have more detail and sharpness in the background of your photos. This style is more realistic and you end up having to work more with your background to create interesting compositions with your photos. And then maybe we should go, if we walk up there with a purple 
those paddles were. Before we do that, let's just try one just here right in front of the branch too. I was positioning Bodhi to be against the lightest part of the tree so the darker leaves can surround her, which helps frame our subject and helps them stand out in a photo where there is a lot of detail. Let's see. Oh yeah, I can see purple. So I'm shooting at f7.1 and I'm just getting a really low angle here so we can get the purple jacaranda trees in the background of our shot. I just think it looks really cool that it matches her outfit too. At f7.1 and onwards, we are getting more into landscape photography territory. The lighting in this location is not perfect by any means, but I was determined to capture the jacarandas in the background, so I'm really making the Sony a7III's dynamic range work hard here. <laughs> I'm happy with how these shots turned out. At f7.1, the locations you work with are not very forgiving. From the first angle I was shooting with, it's all nature in the background, which looks great. But from the second angle, you can see the stairs and the car park in the background of my shot, which is a little distracting. All right, and then let's do some, I think we should sit here as well. It looks so good. Okay, for these sitting shots, I'm gonna go to f8. We're actually only halfway there. <laughs> Lovely. I'm shooting from a bit of a higher angle. I'm trying not to get those cars there <laughs> that are in the background. And there's also quite like a long shadow behind Bodhi just there as well. So I'm trying to avoid having that go through her face. I feel like I should take one wide open here so we can compare what it looks like. Should we try like a laying down shot as well? This? <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> oh God, I really should have brought like a reflector for this. Next up we're doing F10. That looks so good there. I'll take some wide open here as well. So now I'm at F11. So I've got my shutter speed at one over 250, which is probably as low as I would like it to go. We've got like some wind blowing. So if Bertie's hair like flies, I would like to capture it without motion blur. So my ISO is at two and a half thousand right here. And here everything's pretty much tack sharp. <laughs> Oh, I feel like everything's dark. I need to use the viewfinder. That looks really cool with the flower. I'm gonna take just a little step that way. Just had like a bright, that bright patch of sunlight right there in the background, which is a bit distracting. I'll take some in landscape too. The second last aperture we're doing is F13 and I think I'm gonna stick to this spot. We might just like come out this way a little bit more. So I've come out just a bit further away from the trees because we do have this bright area here behind me which is reflecting a bit more light onto Bodhi's face. So she's gonna appear brighter in this photo. So I like using natural reflectors. Oh, we've got the bird in the background. <laughs> Maybe I'll get a full body shot here. Yeah, that's cool. And can we try one where you crouch down as well? Maybe facing kind of to the side. Hi, there's like one palm tree behind you that I can really see. It looks so out of place. I'm gonna hide it behind your head. <laughs> Finally, I am on F16, which is gonna be ridiculously sharp. 
<laughs> 5,000. That looks so cool though. Like you're just chilling out at the park, reading a book. I feel like I liked it with your hands just um, resting on your knees. Oh, I got the brush turkey in the background. <laughs> These look really nice, but the camera's really struggling to focus at F16. Just for comparison, I also want to take a photo here at F1.4 so I can show you guys what it looks like side by side. Oh, it's just so much better. <laughs> And I'll just get a, a little close up here as well. So that is it for our photo shoot today on every single aperture from my lens. I'd love to know which ones were your favorite photos down in the comments below, which apertures did you like and why? For me, I think I liked everything up until f5.6 and after that it was probably too much for me for portraits, like too much sharpness. And my camera was really struggling to focus at f13 onwards. But as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I'll see you all next time. Bye.